Guru Nation, welcome back. Thank you so much. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, share. Uh, we're working hard, myself and Katie, to bring value to you, okay? This is what we do. So this video is actually inspired by Latinos in Clinical Research. Five clinical coordinator interview questions and answers. And I thought, okay, who better to answer this besides the great Latinos in clinical research, which they did a really good job. And we're going to go through some of their responses. But Katie, better known as Caitlin Welch, <laughs> who just ha has gone through this interview process with me and my wife. Um, first of all, what was that like? The interview. Um, Never even asked you this. I think it was a pretty basic interview. You kind of just asked, like, past experience working with multiple different types of people. Um, schooling is a big one. Like, past jobs that would relate to what we do um, in research. And then pretty much, like, God, it was two months ago. Best um, and worst parts of it. The worst parts of it, coming in and saying that you have never worked in research and trying to get a research job. You were scared? A little bit, because I've never worked in research. I've never worked with patients or in a hospital, hospital or a clinic or anything like that. So coming in, not really knowing anything about the job and just applying what I've learned through school and other jobs is nerve-wracking a little bit. Yeah, you did, and you responded to an ad? How did we even get you? Yeah, I, I was think... Indeed. Indeed, yeah. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So when you saw what went through your mind, we're gonna take a tangent, we'll get back to the questions. What, you were just looking at um, Indeed for mm -hmm. jobs Pretty in much. healthcare, or you were just all over the place? Um, I was looking for more like receptionist jobs in like the clinical field, like PT, chiropractics, um, dentistry, like all those types of jobs that could get me an in with some type of doctor or doctors who know doctors pretty much. So I had like a specific field I kind of wanted to go into. Um, and then I stumbled upon your your ad for it and I was just like hmm that's very interesting because it's something I wanted to do in college too and then never got the chance to so yeah I remember it was a very simple ad I wish I still had it maybe you do um, right. we'll put it if we do we'll put screenshot okay so were you nervous for the interview or you were just too confident like I think I you came across as confident so I'm not sure how you felt <laughs> I try to be um I was very nervous just because I had done my research on your side and I looked you up and saw you had like all these followers on, um, shoot, what website am I thinking of? Probably um, LinkedIn. Yeah. LinkedIn. LinkedIn. And then I went to your YouTube and looked because you had that linked on your LinkedIn and oh, yeah. was watching all of those and stuff and you were pretty you are very into clinical research, so I was really nervous because I was really new, but I don't know. It kind of just worked out. Yeah, it worked out. <laughs> easy, easy. So the, were any questions tough that either myself or Dora asked, maybe? Mm, none that I can remember. Yeah, I don't remember either. It was pretty, it was like a good, like, easy conversation pretty much is how I would describe probably it. probably the reason I didn't ask harder questions because I, I must have felt like and I wish I we could have recorded the interview but that would have been weird for you um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that would have been the best thing to do in hindsight one of these days we'll do it um, with the new person future Katie mm -hmm. uh, I felt like you did uh, your homework on research so you like at least knew the basics mm -hmm. so I didn't ask you more my biggest concern was your availability. Yes. Which you kind of discussed. But anyway, so let's go through some of these questions, right? Tell, so these are from Latinos and Clanker Research, guys. So if, I don't know if you can see them here, but that's how we're going to roll. Tell me about a time when you had issues for delegating work and how you overcame it. 
So we, by the way, we didn't ask you any of these. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Ashley Margo and Monica for coming up with these questions. Um, the answers, look, what I tell people that are nervous about going to get their first interview or any interview, because any interview can be nerve wracking, is there is no right answer. They just want, most of the time, they want to see your thought process, especially when they know you haven't done that role before. The only time you got to be nervous is if you're lying on your resume. Like, oh yeah, I've been a CRA. So then expect like 20 questions about how a CRA would handle situation X, Y, Z. If you're not lying on your resume, they know your background. So they're not expecting you to know things you don't know. So most of the time there are questions like this. How do you delegate? And if you want the answers you got to go to latinos and clanca research um to see but there's no right or wrong answers like ashley margo and monica doing it so this is like a transferable skill um this person on latinos and clanca research put an example of when they had to work from home and then family came so now all of a sudden they had a bunch of different things they had to do outside of work and i mean it could be as simple as that or it could be more related to your field. Like the second question, what are two things you do to ensure a high level of patient care? This person put, I like lists. So I have a master list of things I need to check on regularly to ensure patients are being well cared for. I also hold regular training programs to help refresh skills and address any issues my staff are having. This is like probably, especially as a clinical research coordinator, this is a question you're gonna get asked regardless of your previous experiences, how do you deal with patients? I remember this question actually came up in your interview too. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with patients that are either being pushy, being needy, or just being regular patients? Like, you know, how do you deal with that? And you kind of were able to transfer some of your previous experiences. What did you actually say during that? Um, I pretty much said just to stay calm because I've worked in, um, like big retail stores where people are looking for stuff and they don't get what they want because it's not in stock and salons, salons are the worst with people not getting the right haircut that they want or the, uh, stylist is late or something and you have to stay calm because if you get elevated... It makes the situation 10 times worse and then something bad always happens yeah i remember that and i remember that now mm-hmm. that you bring it up because we did ask you about like if a patient's upset you know what are you going to do so katie was able to transfer her skills from salons and customer service mm-hmm. into this because at the end of the day patients are our customers in clinical research yes Um, Then there's the questions about how do you handle stressful situations, um, which is basically the same question, more or less. Um, On the Latinos in clinical research, they're saying, tell me about a stressful experience you had and how you handled it. The answer was, I find being understaffed to be the most stressful situation because it always feels like there is too much to do and not enough people to get it done. One time I had someone call off on a day when we were already going to be two people short. I had no idea how we were going to make it through the day. Instead of panicking, I managed to talk to another department that I knew rarely had staffing issues. So again, no right or wrong. Don't go memorizing these. You can have a thousand answers to this question. What they want is specifics and you can't make up specifics like katie's example of salon like somebody came in they didn't like their you know their their fade or whatever haircut they're getting Mm -hmm. and they they go complain to katie how did you handle it you can't make that up so they they know she's actually dealt with that Uh, same thing in this in this uh case question here case study so a lot of these questions again if you're not lying they're just gonna ask you for situational how you responded and there's thousands of answers and they're unique to you anything else katie that we're missing no i think you hit the basics just i do remember you or dora at least specifically asking me how to stay organized in clinical research Mm -hmm. because i'm i'm 
kind of an OCD person, so I like lists. I like like I make all the cheat sheets. I yeah. organize the room and all that stuff, so I know where everything is exactly where it needs to be. It's you pretty know, nice. Just That's rearranged Katie's everything. <laughs> That's Katie's work so far. So. So yours. Uh, that's excellent. Be prepared mm -hmm. for how do you stay organized? Question. Yes. All right. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Good luck. Bye, bye.